Hello, I'm Monty Westerfield, and this is Hush Talks. I'm a professor in the Institute of Neuroscience at the University of Oregon. Our laboratory studies Usher syndrome, and today I'd like to talk with you about research that we're doing to develop therapies to preserve vision in Usher syndrome. Those of you that have viewed previous Usher talks already know a lot about Usher syndrome that Usher syndrome is caused by gene mutations. We currently know that mutations in any one of 11 different genes, at least 11 different genes, can cause Usher syndrome. These Usher syndrome genes produce different kinds of proteins, and it's thought that these proteins bind together to form protein complexes, and hence they work together. And that's why mutations in different Usher genes produce pretty much the same symptoms uh, in, in uh, Usher patients. We also know that uh, Usher proteins function in the retina in the eye and in the inner ear. And that's why when there are mutations and problems with these proteins, it results in vision and hearing problems. Uh, we also know that uh, Usher gene mutations ultimately can cause retinal and inner ear cells to die. Previous Usher talks have uh, talked about gene therapies that are being developed. These are very exciting uh, research avenues that ultimately may produce cures for Usher syndrome. But we also know that uh, for gene therapies to work, we need to save cells from dying because the gene therapy can't work if the cells are already gone. And this really provides the motivation for the, the research that I'm going to tell you about today to try to develop therapies to slow or halt the uh, loss of cells in Usher syndrome, to provide time for uh, development of gene therapies um, and, and to provide uh, patients with uh, longer uh, term vision. Also, it's possible that these therapies may well, uh, that protect cells may well also enhance the efficacy of uh, gene therapies. In other words, they could be used as a, as a co-treatment. So let's talk a little bit about the cells that are affected in Usher syndrome. So in the ear, the cells that are primarily affected in Usher syndrome are the mechanosensory cells that are uh, specialized to detect sound. The primary cell type in the eye that's affected are photoreceptor cells. Uh, these also are specialized cells. They're specialized to detect light and help, uh, and help, help us uh, provide us with vision. So the Usher proteins are found to be localized in these specialized cells in the regions as indicated by the arrows in this diagram. Uh, in various specialized subcellular locations in both the mechanosensory cells and the photoreceptors. So uh, to try to develop therapies for uh, preventing cell death, uh, we use zebrafish as um, a model system for Usher syndrome. Uh, zebrafish have been described in a couple of previous Usher talks. Uh, so you probably remember that they have a variety of advantages for studying Usher syndrome. In particular, uh, zebrafish retinal and inner ear cells are very similar to humans. Zebrafish have the same Usher genes as humans. Uh, and zebrafish Usher gene mutations produce retinal and inner ear cell death, just as in humans. And importantly, uh, zebrafish have advantages for drug screening. They're a small aquatic animal, and it's easy to apply uh, compounds and drugs to the water um, and then test whether or not they would, uh, are able to delay cell death. So how do we measure uh, vision and hearing in zebrafish? We have a variety of methods for doing this. Uh, for vision, one simple way is to look behaviorally. So this is uh, a system uh, where a fish is placed in a dish 
and the dish is placed inside of a chamber that has alternating black and white stripes. So when the chamber rotates, the fish's eyes follow the movement of the black and white stripes. As shown here, the fish on the left is a normal fish and you can see the eyes following uh, the black and white stripes, which are not shown in the, in the image here. Whereas the mutant fish on the right that has uh, reduced vision uh, does not follow the movement nearly as well. Similarly, we can examine uh, balance in uh, zebrafish as shown here in uh, uh, looking down on a dish with some uh, usher gene mutants. Um, there's one fish here in the center who's upright, that's a normal fish, whereas the other fish um, have obvious balance problems. They uh, lie on their sides and when they try to swim, they uh, oftentimes swim in circles. Similarly, we can measure uh, hearing by simply tapping on the side of the dish. This startles the fish and they uh, respond. Whereas uh, uh, fish with usher gene mutations do not hear as well. And when uh, they do respond, they have these obvious balance problems. So um, how do usher gene mutations result in cell death? Uh, we know that uh, usher genes produce different kinds of proteins and that these usher proteins bind together to form protein complexes in photoreceptors and mechanosensory cells. So uh, when and where in cells is there a problem with these proteins and how does this lead to cell death? So our strategy was to study um, the mechanosensory hair cells and the photoreceptors and examine when and where the usher proteins form and where the protein complexes form to try to figure out where the and when the problem occurs. So uh, just to review briefly um, how proteins are produced. So proteins are produced from uh, the genes that are located in the uh, chromosomes and the DNA in the nucleus. And the first step in this process is that the, the DNA uh, produces uh, an RNA. And then the second step in the process is that the RNA travels from the nucleus out into the cytoplasm in the cell body to a structure called the endoplasmic reticulum, which we refer to as the ER. And it's at the ER that the RNA is translated into protein. The proteins then are further transported to their functional sites. In this case, this is a mechanosensory cell um, uh, in the inner ear. So uh, we look to see where along this pathway the Usher protein complex is formed and what grows wrong when there is an Usher gene mutation. And what we discovered uh, is that the Usher protein complexes actually form at the level of the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum. And the complex as a whole is transported from the ER to its ultimate uh, functional site. So what happens then in an Usher mutation? When there's an Usher mutation, we found that the Usher protein complexes fail to form at the ER. Uh, even though the mutation may affect only one of the proteins, none of the other proteins bind together to form a complex. And uh, the proteins accumulate in the ER. They're not transported out to their ultimate functional sites in the cell. So when proteins accumulate in the ER, this produces an abnormal uh, response in the cell that's referred to as ER stress. And we measured this in a variety of different ways. Two methods are shown here on this slide, uh, where the higher the bar, the higher the level of, uh, of ER stress in the cells. And these are in the case of uh, Usher 1C mutations. So ER stress in general is, is not a bad thing. Uh, cells can 
uh, oftentimes compensate for it. But with the long-term uh, problem that, that proteins are either not being made or are being made in an uh, incorrect form because of the Usher uh, gene mutations, this ultimately results in cell death. The cell cannot uh, compensate to the ER stress over long periods of time. So this was a pretty exciting result because it indicated that ER stress is probably the proximal cause of cell death in uh, the retina and the inner ear in Usher syndrome. We also know that a variety of environmental factors can increase this type of cellular stress. So we examined uh, exposure to toxic compounds that uh, produce ER stress. And we also looked at exposure of the animals to bright light because bright light is uh, also a stressor, particularly uh, for the retina. And as shown here in this experiment, um, comparing normal animals to Usher mutants, in this case, Usher 2A mutants, the two bars in the left here indicate the normal in green and the mutants in red when the animals are living in relatively low light levels in our aquarium facility. And the two bars on the right show the animals when they are exposed to bright light. And this is not intensely bright light, but light that would be equivalent to sitting in the shade on a bright sunny day outside. And what you can see here is we counted the number of dying cells in the retinas of these animals and for the normal animals, there's really no significant effect of increasing the light. Whereas in the Usher mutants, uh, exposure to this bright light uh, really increases the number of cells that are dying in the retina, uh, indicating that um, probably the light exposure is contributing to the ER stress in these cells that's uh, already being produced by the mutation, and that then results in uh, much more rapid uh, cell death. So um, in summary, um, what we've been able to show is that ER stress is a proximal cause of cell death in at least some forms of Usher syndrome. We haven't examined all of the different Usher genes yet, but the ones that we have examined uh, all produce uh, ER stress. And this is an exciting result because there are already uh, uh, drugs that are approved uh, and also drugs in development to reduce ER stress in more famous neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, where uh, neuro neuronal degeneration in these diseases is also to some extent due to ER stress. So we think that uh, these drugs that are in the pipeline or are already approved for uh, patients in these other diseases may be appropriate for use in Usher syndrome. So we plan to use our zebrafish models of Usher syndrome to test these and other potential therapies. We can screen um, many, many small compounds and other potential drugs to see whether or not they can reduce ER stress and uh, save cells from dying. Also our results uh, point out the effect of light. Uh, sunglasses are probably a good idea for everyone, but our results would suggest that sunglasses are probably very important for Usher patients to protect the retina. And it's a real simple thing that everyone can do, so uh, take care of your eyes. Finally, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, people that we uh, have done this work. Um, our group at the University of Oregon, and we are also collaborating with the uh, Radbun University uh, Medical Center group. Uh, and uh, at the bottom are our funding sources, people, and agencies that are supporting our work. And thank you very much for your attention.